I never take claim to any of the photos, which is really important. That that's not my work. <laughs> What you're watching isn't a video of a moonrise. It's hundreds of random still photos found online, selected and stitched together by artist Cassandra C. Jones. Her work explores how we relate to images on the internet and digital iconography. And we visited her studio in Ojai, California. Right behind us here, this is not wallpaper, this is your work. Yes, it is. It is actually wallpaper, but it's an art piece, not something you would find it. So it's not offensive to you that somebody looks at your work and says, ah, that's wallpaper. No, 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 I designed <laughs> it as wallpaper. <laughs> um, and people have bought it to put in their homes, mostly collectors, not um, sort of the average person buying wallpaper. And if you get closer, you can see that everything in the wallpaper is made up of flamingos, pink flamingos, and everything in there sort of deconstructed and reconstructed into a floral pattern. Most photos I found of pink flamingos were all in that lawn ornament shape mm -hmm. and it was interesting to me how that kitsch object could influence snapshot photography that that would be the money shot of a pink flamingo <laughs> so i collected them and i again deconstructed them and reconstructed them into this and it, it kind of talks a lot about the things that we bring into our home that um, emulate nature that we don't have nature in our homes, but we bring these things in to emulate it. And wallpaper is one of those things. The actual process of creating this this repeated pattern, this the wallpaper, uh, is this something that's manipulated digitally and then printed out in large form? Yes. Or? Yes. So everything, I, I take a picture from the internet. And, and a lot of times I buy the photos. Sometimes I just take them. And I, I cut them out meticulously in Photoshop. And, and then I do everything in Photoshop and print them out. You also do yeah, large-scale yeah. video installations, and these yeah. are uh, silent works. Silent works, and I work very hard to keep them silent. Everybody always wants to put music to them, but when you actually get into the piece, you realize why it's silent, and that is because um, when you collect so many images of one thing, if you put any kind of music to it, it colors it to you know to a certain nationality or a certain group of people or a certain you know flavor. And I try to keep it as anonymous as possible so everybody can experience it the same way. This piece is called Eventide, and it's the again it's the first piece I ever did. And and the way that this whole thing got started is that my grandmother made me promise her when I was 12 years old that I would go to Greece with her when my grandfather died. And he was dying for 16 years. Every, like all the time I would call grandfather's dying. <laughs> Summer before my thesis here at Carnegie Mellon, he died. And she held me to my promise to go to Greece with her. I was reading the book On Photography by Susan Sontag and there's a line in it that says sunsets are cheesy because there's so many photographs taken of it. and. Um, I was in a place where everything had been photographed over and over again. It's this tiny little island, Greece, you know, it's like the building, everyone comes, but I was in, uh, I ended up in the tourist book twice. <laughs> and at some point I realized there was just enough pictures on this island, of this island, and that I was going to put my camera away and not take any more photos that summer. And instead, I started collecting photos. Every day we would leave the house, yeah. and she would walk down the street, and someone would recognize her from way back when, if she hadn't been there in 36 years, they would stop, they would stare, they would cry, they would hug, we would go up for a coffee. <laughs> and this went on over and over and over, all day long this would happen. And I would just be sitting there like, like eyes glazed over, like listening to them jibber jabber in Greek, all the gossip of 36 years. And I would sit and look through photo albums of people in, of the, in the island, of all my relatives on the island. Mm -hmm. And the sunset kept coming up and I was reading Susan Sontag. And so I decided to start asking for them about the time that I left that I decided that I was going to put them in order. So they're in order based on the bottom of the sun and where its relationship is to the horizon. Incredible. So it's uh, in five minutes, um, I chose uh, 1,391 to go through um, in five minutes and it goes from the top of the screen to below the horizon. <laughs> and. Uh, and it changed everything. This piece changed everything. It, it changed the way I looked at photography. It changed the way I made art. It changed everything. And mostly because 
this in art school it's kind of beat out of you that you're um that no that feeling of wanting to do anything like anyone else you know <laughs> you're supposed to be incredibly individual mm-hmm. and to take a picture of a sunset as art did wasn't really in my realm of thinking and so i i i started looking at the amateur photography as being the art and that connection between them as being the art and then everything got really interesting After the sunset, I started thinking, what other kinds of images echo out there and, and that are repeated over and over again? And so I went on to eBay and I started looking at, they had these photo subscription CDs that you could buy like a hundred sailboats or a hundred <laughs> daffodils or like whatever. And they were all about in the $20 range. Right. And then there was this one that kept popping up that was cheerleaders. That was $1.99. <laughs> And so I bought the cheerleader one, <laughs> Duh. And, and I realized that, you know, thinking about it, uh, after a while, I came to the conclusion that it's really the crotch shot, that's the money shot of the cheerleaders, <laughs> and that um, it was the perfect combination between family values and pornography, and American family values and pornography, excuse me. So I took all the cheerleaders, and this was the first wallpaper that I made, and I decided to somehow depict the you know the American family values as being sort of religion and the cheerleader as being sort of a wallflower and and made the wallpaper literally a wallflower they look like floral specimens from um, you know a, a, a botany manual and they are in fact cheerleaders crotch shots yes and a lot of a lot of people ask me why they're so small people want them to be these big things and um, that was very specific. Um, to the piece, which is because, and it's because I wanted there to be a few things that happen when you walked in the gallery. I wanted you to walk in and see um, what looked like your grandmother's floral wallpaper, and some people pass it by because it, that's what it looks like. Mm-hmm. And then I wanted it to become something else if you took a step closer, like it start to become something. And then it's something even further when you walk really close to it and you realize that it's that that's uh, what it is. It's a video of nine Canadian geese that were taken by different photographers, all at the same angle. And all I had to do was find those geese and put them together to recreate the act of flying. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting to me that this is even possible, uh, that you could go out and look on the internet and could, if you could find enough of one thing, you could recreate life. The pieces that I've been working on now are called single frame animations and what they are is they're animations made from one photograph of a flock of birds. And basically what I've done is I've taken a photograph of a flock of birds where it has, you know, 10 birds in it or something. And in within that 10 birds, every position of the bird is represented. The wings are down, the wings are media, uh, halfway, the wings are up. So I, I duplicate the photo 10 times and I move each bird into the center of the screen once <laughs> and it creates the flying. It creates the act of flying. Wow. And the animation, it was all done with one photograph. Makes me think of like the, the early Edward Mybridge photographs, the the uh, works that 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 photographers and scientists did in the early days of of photography to think about how to create the illusion of motion before motion pictures existed. Yeah, I always talk about my work is not the photos themselves, but it's the glue between them. Mm-hmm. So if you take away one of the photographs, it's not my work anymore. So I never take claim to any of the photos, which is really important, that that's not my work. There are more photographs out there, and I don't know if they're taken, but that are published of the wax of the moon, which is the big first part here, Mm -hmm. than the wane of the moon. Is that right? The conclusion that I came to is that there are less photos of the wane of the moon because in the wax of the moon you can see the man in the moon and somehow that's more aesthetic.